Hello and welcome. So, uh, back out in the woods. About time to. Nothing technical tonight. An overnight camp. I've got a canvas tent. I've got a cast iron cooker. I'm going to uh, set up here. This is a flattish spot. I've been here before. It's uh, not a million miles away from where I live. But uh, it's just nice to be out. So, we'll clear some of this. Uh, forest duff away that's full of spiky things. Yeah, I'm going to get the tent up, I'm going to get a little fire reflector built and uh, some sort of pot hanger to hang my cooker on. And then we'll get settled in. Good to be out. Slightly going uphill that way, so I want it so that I'm sleeping with my head at the top of the hill, the door there, and I'll get the fire and my reflector out front. No problem. those that don't know, this is a Polish lavu. It's a kind of Polish army tent made out of a pair of canvas ponchos that each, you know, pair of soldiers would wear. And um, they then would have a two-man shelter between them. But it's a very small two-man shelter. It's just about enough for one, really, in my opinion. The tricky bit is I was fine getting the getting this pole in because it's sort of compartmentalized very easily comes apart so just have to a bit at a time get that in the middle where it's supposed to be It's quick and simple. So, the fire out the front here. Oh, that'll about do. Nice warm today. I'm lose the shirt for a while. Peg for shutting the door later. I'm going to put my I've got some ground sheet stuff in there. And then I'm going to get on and get the front sorted out, and then think about getting some wood and what have you. And then we'll uh, maybe have a beer. Let's go there. 
use this mud to sort of build up the edges so it's more of a pit with less digging involved. You know, in the morning, just push all that soil on top, job done. For the fire reflector I'm just going to collect kind of dead fall and stuff that's as wet as possible but I'll cut something nice for uh, starting the fire hopefully find a bit of um, dead standing that'll be you know guaranteed to be dry inside for the rest of the night I'll try and just get you know windfall stuff I just want one nice piece to start me off it's a lovely day this one is ideal. You got to, you know, it's, it's dead. It's not too tall. There's no branches on it at all. It's just a long straight pole. So I'm going to try and cut this one down safely. I wonder if I can push it down actually. I think the rest of the tree's all grown up, but this one sort of died off early. I think it's got to come towards me. I have to go in the other way. This is, you know, flimsy. That's the bit I worry about snapping off and coming down and clocking me one. But yeah, it's uh, it's down, and that's probably enough wood for a while. starting piece you know this this wood is quite knotted but this section doesn't have knots or not really so this would be the one to split up and use as fire starting the rest can all be logs sweat on though. ground 
They're wet and rotten. We'll start with the wettest. How wide is this? One. It's about two saw blades. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we'll just cut this in half. There's a little gap on the side, so let's see if I can force one of these pieces down there. Just wedge it in. There we go. That's not too bad. That's it. I think we're about ready. Oh, it's getting a bit chilly now. Yeah, I think the only thing I'll need to do is um, organise a pot hanger and then I'm about ready, I think, and we'll split some of that up and we'll get the fire going. Yes, pot hanger. Okay, so I've cut a piece of wood with a, whatever you call that on it. And I'm just gonna get my knife. Just make a sort of a stop cut and then a sort of push cut into it. hang like that and I'll tie I might do a little tiny bit the other side just to give my string something to bite into I do and then we'll tie this up with a Kind of a jam knot. There we go, that can hang like that. Pod. Right there, a bit more 
cordage. We'll do the jam knot again. And that is, you know, not tied on the uh, end of your cord. Another one below it that's loose. That's all your other gubbins underneath. And then just push it through that knot. And then just sort of pull it tight. And then as it as it reaches this knot, it just acts as a stopper and becomes a kind of a noose type thing. Stand him up. Turn it into a cooking track by just tightening it up a bit. Let's do it over the fire. And then this loose bit of string is going to wrap kind of up and down through the holes just to make it a little bit tougher. Access to the fire. Job done. Right, ready. It's getting cold. Right, I'm going to get stuff ready and light this fire then. Homely. Not bad afternoon's work. Right. Once we're working on these are for splitting. these down for kindling size.
Right. Is that gonna stay? Camden off menu IPA. Cheers, by the way. I'm going to get my bed ready before I cook any food so I can see what I'm doing. I've got my, uh, what's it called, XPED down mat 9, long and wide. And it just occurred to me, I don't know if it fits in this uh, Polish lavu. So we're about to find out together. I've got the schnozzle to help blow it up a bit easier. It's not the longest thing in the world. I do like this mat. It is comfortable, it's wide enough, it's long enough. It's just <laughs> whether it's too long for this tent. So the snozzle, I'm sure you've seen this before, but this mat has got a hand pump, so you sort of put your hand on here and pump away, but it takes forever, so get one of these mats it's worth getting one of these schnozzles just to fill it with air oh. and lean on it just takes a bit of time to get going but it only takes oh, three or four of these bags to blow this mat right up and it saves a whole lot of huffing and puffing, which is nice. I'm sure there's a you know, correct way to use this, and I'm sure I'm not doing it right, but it works for me. It's going in, I can hear it. 
Okay, I'm bored now. It's weird, it's like it, uh, it takes time to open up all the little sort of valvey things in there. Uh, valvey things is a technical term, you know, I understand. But once it's going, it goes quick. That will about do it. So then, does it fit? That was the question. Oh yeah. So got a little bit of room at that end and a little bit of room at that end. That's about perfect, I think. Yes. Glorious. Let's get my uh, sleeping bag. And this is a sort of four season down bag I've got. So it should be toasty and warm tonight. Give it a little bit of time to loft itself a little bit. And then this uh, thermo pillow thing, which last time I used this in the morning, it was a little bit flat. Not flat, but it had just gone down a little. So I'm wondering if this has got a little puncture or maybe something wrong with the valve. I'll blow it up fully now. And I'm just gonna leave it under my sleeping bag. And we'll see later whether it's gone down or not. And if it has, that's a shame, because I like that pillow. Might have to invest in a new one. If anyone's got any suggestions of camping pillows, I want the best one ever. It'll be a hard job to beat that one because I've really liked that one. But, uh, I say if it's got a problem, I don't know if it's fixable or if I've got to get a new one. But anyway, right, supper time I think. Okay, so tonight. So I've got my cast iron pot, it's the Pet Petromax 1 litre I think it is. I'm going to make, or have a go at making, frittata. But yeah, that's the pot, it's only a little one, but it should be all I need. So with me I've got some whoa, onions and peppers chopped up. I've got some diced potatoes that are cooked. Got a bit of chopped bacon, a bit of grated cheese. Somewhere I've got a couple of eggs and a little bit of milk. And that should be all the ingredients for a nice sort of meal in one in the pot. Yeah, a couple of eggs and a spork. So I've also got my thick gloves for handling the pot and a couple of sticks for manhandling coals and things. That is a nice solid base on that fire at the moment, so I'm just going to stand the pot on there while I fry things and get them ready and all that sort of business. So in a perfect world, in this pot, I don't really want to start frying stuff if I can help it, because I want to roast that over the fire. So I made a, a cartouche at home, which is a circle of grease proof, to kind of fit the pot thusly. And I think I'm going to get my, 
Actually, I might use the lid. I might use the lid of this. And I just get it out of the way. I just stand that on the fire. Can use that as a frying pan and uh, sort of fry everything in there. That's a good idea, Dan. Yes, I know. Now, so I'm going to fry things, add them to the pot, and then I'll beat the eggs and a bit of milk and stuff, pour it over the top, lid goes on, hang it over the fire. That sounds like a glorious plan. So I better go on and do it. Right, bacon I think first. Let me put my gloves on so that I don't get raw meat over my hands. The bacon has its own fat content, so hopefully, if I put this bacon in the uh, lid of the pot, it won't uh, it won't uh, require any fat because I didn't bring any. I was going to bring a bit of oil, and I didn't. Oh, I hear that sizzle. I did bring was one of these sort of Ziploc bags that you get in the kind of military MREs. I think it was in the British one. I'm going to use that to keep all my rubbish in and then seal it up for the night so that no nasties come trying to eat my rubbish. And I've got my, what is this, GS, GSI I think? Uh, you can't see it, can you? Yeah, GSI spatula, for want of a better word. So that's it. I think enough talking. I think I'll just get on and do it, shall I? And then we'll see how it comes out. I've got high hopes, but you know, you never know. These things can end up a disaster. craziness going on in there. Hello! <laughs> yeah, you better run. What else do I need? Let's move that away from the heat and let it cool. Little paper sachets of salt and pepper out of a uh, another MRE thing. I don't want to do too much salt because it's already got bacon on it. And then I've got this wadge of grated cheese that can go in. There we go, so we're ready to go. We just need to put the egg and milk in. 
This is going to be huge. I think what I'll do, I need to beat the eggs, really. So, I said I was going to use this as a rubbish bag. I just emptied it so that I can crack my eggs into this. And then I'll, I'll use it as a rubbish bag afterwards. I've got this one for now. And where's my spork? Right, beat up that pierce the bag. That's two eggs. And we'll go a quarter of a pint of milk, I suppose. We'll do the lot. I've got another one of them little bottles for the morning for coffee, so. That should be good to go. Let's pour this in. Right. That's it. That is dinner. Put the lid on. Right. Oh well. Stoke this fire up. And get the uh, tripod ready. Just put this where I'm not going to kick it over. Tripod just to shuffle it around and lower it down a little bit. There we go. That's okay. Ooh. Carefully. Just gotta wait now. I'm getting hungry. This fire is glorious. It's so nice to be able to get back out again. This is uh, stage one. To, I was longing to, you know, get back in the woodland for a camp like this, but I've got trips planned for a little bit further afield. Hoping to get down to Dartmoor and a couple of other places in the coming weeks, months, all being well. Yeah, this is a nice pilgrimage out to the forest. I haven't really got much to say. I'm quite enjoying just sitting.
there's uh, steam coming off that and it smells glorious so uh, I think I'm gonna check it I'm not sure if it's done but we're gonna have a look okay so Spill any in there. Well, that seems like it's about done, I think. Oh, wow! <laughs> Check it out. Great. I'll never be able to eat it all. Let's see if it's done properly. Look at that. <laughs> that smells ridiculously nice. And I've got a little bit of that to go with it. Hot diggity. Sort of pepper sauce. like the smell of it. Okay. All right boys, calm down, calm down. Whoa, that pepper sauce is hot. Mmm. That. That's ridiculously nice. Whoa. A bit eager with the pepper sauce. Limey. I'll valiantly do my best to eat the whole thing. I really want to tuck in, I'm starving, but it's so hot. Got to be careful. Oh, that pepper sauce. That goes well, but my God, it's hot. Mmm. Look at that. Bacon, onion, peppers. <laughs> Well, done the lot. Whew. That was awesome. Really, really nice. Yeah, I think that's it then for the evening. Actually, I might make a drink. I've got about a quarter of a can of beer. And, um, and after that, um, I've got a fruit tea or I've got... English tea. That's the last of my wood on the fire as well. I might maybe saw up a little bit more so I can sit up for another hour or two. Oh, I can't go how nice that was. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so I'm going to cut a bit more wood and then just chill by the fire. And um, drink a cup of tea, I think. So, um, Catch up with you at bedtime, I suppose. Bye for now.
it's very little. So I had a brainwave while I was uh, talking to my wife and uh, put my cast iron stove in the coals of the fire and uh, heated it up. I've just put it in the tent. There's nothing in it. Carly said to me, why don't you fill it with coals? And while that sounds like a good idea, I'm not too sure on the uh, carbon monoxide score with that. So I thought best not to trial it while I'm, you know, on my own. If anyone knows if that's a sensible idea or whether it would be a terrible idea, I'm not putting burning stuff in, I'm just putting the red hot embers. But the cast iron pots have got a little hole to let steam out, so if there are fumes, they would be coming out that hole. So, I'm not 100%, but I thought it can't hurt to heat the pot up. Yep, it's hot. Um, so just when I shut the door, I've got a little bit of warm, ish, you know, air circulating. I put it up this end where my head is. So um, hopefully that'll just take the chill off a little bit. And that's my pillow. And I said we'd look at this and yeah, it has gone down a little bit. That's disappointing. Not massively, that much. What, an eighth? It's gone down an eighth in the evening. So, there is something wrong with it. Can't hear anything. But... Hey ho. Yes, right. I'm gonna get myself. I've got mud everywhere. I'm gonna get myself uh, ready for bed. Well, the doors are buttoned up, finally. They're a struggle, they are. Anyone who owns a Lavu, you know what I'm talking about. But yes, we are buttoned up and in bed. Time for sleep. See it bright and cheerful in the morning. Night, folks. Morning. It's noisy. There's a there's a farm over in that direction. I keep hearing a chainsaw. Someone's making an early start. I say early start. It's, it's about half past eight now. Oh, slept like a baby. This mat does fit in this tent, but because I was on a slight hill, <laughs> I woke up and I looked down. I've, I've sort of slid down the hill a little bit during the night and I'm uh, sticking out a little bit. And I seem to have knocked the peg out as well. <laughs> Oopsie. So that would have been a small problem if it had rained. I think my feet were sticking out of that. Definitely something wrong with my pillow. That's a real shame. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to hang around too long this morning. I think I've got things to do, so I think it's going to be a uh, cup of coffee and then I'll start heading off. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to light this fire up again. I'll tidy it all up in a minute while it's cold. Right, 
what we've got in here then. Coffee, changer, coffee filter. Stuff for a cup of tea. Oh, I've got a porridge. Morning geese. Quite like this little thing. I bought this on. Uh, yeah, I bought it on Amazon. It wasn't expensive. Just sits on the top of the spirit burner. And um, yeah, I like it. I find the problem with this is when it's uh, you know when your water's boiled and you want to put this out, you've got to take this off, and obviously lifting it off is a problem. So it's kind of two sticks or a couple of tent pegs or something to lift it off. But other than that, it's small and it's it works. Yeah, I just find these trenches there. They're awkward to light first thing in the morning when it's chilly. Partly because you, you can't see. Oh, that is a light. Now, is that a light? It might be, it might not. My eyesight is not good enough to be able to tell. Yeah, I think it is. Yes. <laughs> but I've had mornings where it's been a lot colder than this, and I, you know, struggle to get this lit. So the fire's cold now. The reason I dug it is so I can cover it like this, nice and easy. We don't have then, you know, the uh, unattractive fire scars being a blight on the woodland, you'd never know there'd been a fire there. I'll just return these bits you know, randomly from whence they came. It's weird when you take the tent away and it's just a mat on a piece of tarpaulin sitting in the dirt. It's quite funny. Ah oh dear. I need a cup of coffee. I'm going very slow. That's what I'm talking about, this thing. It's tricky. That is super hot. Sweet. So I'm just gonna add all of that to that is uh, filter coffee and sugar. Use this little spoon. 
lid on. I'm just going to let that brew. Sweat on now. So, time to be on my way, I think. Yeah, all cleaned up, left no trace. The woodland will settle down once it rains and then leaves all smooth out a bit. It looks a bit rough at the moment, but. I'm happy enough. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe if you like the content. Give the video a thumbs up because that really does help. And uh, yeah, I'm taking myself home. Thanks again. See you later. Bye for now. <laughs>